Hey there, Sam. In the previous lesson, I mentioned that every app event is broadcastable to the WebSocket clients. Let's discuss further on this topic. In short, when we want to broadcast our app event, Laravel requires us to broadcast these events through something called channels. There are three types of channels in Laravel. The public channel, presence channel, and private channels. When WebSocket clients want to connect to our server, they'll need to subscribe through one of these channels provided by the WebSocket server. Here's how they work. A public channel does not need authentication and anyone in the world can connect to this channel. Presence channel and private channel requires authorization and the difference between presence and private is that a presence channel is aware of all the users that are currently connected to the channel. In other words, all the users in the presence channel can see the information of each other. This is perfect for chat room application where the users know who is online, who is offline, who posted this message and that message, so on and so forth. A presence channel is useful when the identity of the user connected to this channel is important to the application. Private channel, on the other hand, is for situation where we don't want the users to know each other, and we simply only want authorized user to connect to this channel. We can use private channel for general purposes, for example, getting all the login user to connect to the same private channel in our app so that we can easily broadcast notification to all of our users. We don't need each user to know each other, so in this case, a private channel will be perfect. All right, now let's look at how we can broadcast Laravel app events and define broadcast channels. The first thing that we need to do is to go to our app config file and uncomment the broadcast service provider under the application service provider section. The broadcast service provider here is different to the one provided by the core framework. Listed up here, the purpose of the core broadcast service provider is to set up the necessary code for broadcasting to work in Laravel, while the one down here is for us to set up our app broadcast service logic, like defining the channel authentication routes, setting up the middlewares, and so on. And now if we look inside the service provider, we can see that it is a very simple service provider class containing only two lines of code. The routes function from the broadcast facade will register the authentication routes for presence and private channels to work. And line 19 here will register the authentication routes for private and presence channels that we define inside the channels.php file, leaving inside the routes folder. Let's take a look inside it. And as you can see here, this file is pretty similar to the other routes file that we have in our app. But instead of using the route facade, we're using the broadcast facade here. And we're defining a channel this time, not a route endpoint. The syntax is pretty similar to its route counterpart. So the first argument is the channel name, and the second argument is a callback function that will determine whether the current authenticated user can subscribe to a given channel or not. The first argument in the callback function is the instance of the current login user and any subsequent argument represents the value of the placeholders in a channel name. So in the sample snippet here, it is representing the ID placeholder in the channel name. For a private channel, we'll need to return a condition, and if the condition is true, that means the current authenticated user will be able to subscribe to this channel. In a presence channel, however, in order for us to authenticate a user, we need to return the user information in the callback function, rather than just returning a boolean. We will discuss more about this in the next video where we'll look at how to connect our front end to the back end. But here is a simplified overview on how WebSocket authentication work in Laravel. So here's the client and here's the server. When a client wants to subscribe to a private or presence channel, the client will first send a HTTP request to the server that is directed to the off endpoint in Laravel, which is by default slash broadcasting slash off. Upon receiving the HTTP request, Laravel will then trigger the callback function as we define in the channel.php file. If the callback function returns a truthy result, then the server will return a success response back to the client with the appropriate metadata for the client to establish a successful WebSocket connection with the server in a subsequent request. The data in a HTTP response is mandatory to make this WebSocket connection. Now, if the callback function that we define in the channel.php file is returning a false result, then the server will return a unsuccessful response and therefore the client cannot establish a WebSocket connection with the server. This initial HTTP request and response is what we call as handshake. Okay, now let's look at how we can set up our event classes to get Laravel to broadcast them to the WebSocket clients. 
And just for demonstration, I'll be creating a dummy event class. Let's go to our terminal and type in PHP Addison make event and I'll call it playground event. And now let's go to our newly created event class. And the first thing that we need to do in order to make this class broadcastable is to make it implement the should broadcast interface. Laravel will automatically broadcast any event classes that implements the should broadcast interface. And now if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see that there's a function called broadcast on. This is a function where we define which WebSocket channel that we want to broadcast this event on. And by default, Laravel has made this event to broadcast on a private channel. And now just for demonstration, I'll change it to a public channel instead, which will just be the channel class instead of the private channel class. Now the first argument in a channel constructor is the name of the channel. Now our app could have multiple WebSocket channels, so it's a good idea to have some sort of naming conventions. Otherwise, our channel names could go out of hand very, very quickly. Personally, I like to name my channel in this way. First, I'll start with the channel type. In our case here, we are broadcasting on a public channel, so it will be public. Followed by a dot, the second part will be the resource name. And most of the time, it will be a model name. In our case here, since we're creating a dummy class, so I'll call it playground. You can put as many parts as you want, but for the final part, I always like to use it as the channel number or the channel ID. I'll hard code it as one for now. Channel numbers or channel ID is great to manage WebSocket events. For example, if someone is working on post number one, you wouldn't want events from post number two to affect post number one, do you? That's gonna cause chaos and never gonna lead to a happy ending. All right, let's test if our event is working. We first need a way to send out this event, so I'll go to the web.php file, and in the playground dummy endpoint, I'll fire an instance of the playground event. And now we'll go to our terminal and start our WebSocket server by typing in PHP Addison WebSocket serve. Once we're done, let's go to our browser and visit the debugging dashboard provided by Laravel WebSockets. Let's click on the connect button and you should see some events pops up in the event list. And if we go back to our terminal, you should also see some debugging messages inside the terminal. Okay, now we'll attempt to call the playground endpoint to fire an instance of the playground event. Let's click on the send button. Oh no, we see an error. It says pusher error off key should be a valid app key. Now in the last lesson, I mentioned that Laravel WebSocket is a pusher drop-in replacement. We will need to configure Laravel to use Laravel WebSocket as the WebSocket server rather than using pusher. To do that, we need to go to the broadcasting config and in the pusher driver, we'll add in a few more options. By putting in the host and port, we can define our own custom WebSocket server address. And since we're not using any SSL certificate, we should set use TLS and encrypted to false. Okay, now let's go back to Postman and try again. And we see a 200 response. Fantastic. Let's go back to the browser and look at the debugging dashboard. And we see a new event popped up in an event list, which is our playground event. And if we go to our terminal, we can see that our event is logged in a console with the event name and the channel name. And as you can see here, the default event name is the fully qualified PHP class name of our playground event. And here's a question. What if I want to use my own custom event name? The answer is super simple. We just need to define another function in our event class. And the function name is called broadcast s. And we should return the custom function name that we want. I'll call it playground for now. Let's test our code. We'll go back to Postman and send another request. And back in our browser, we can see there's a new event popping up. And now with a custom event name called playground. Great. We can also attach information inside the broadcasted event where the data attached in the event can be used by the front end. To do that, we need to go back to the event class and define a new method called broadcast with. And whatever we return in this function will be attached as part of the event payload. So here, I'm just gonna return a simple dummy array and we'll go back to Postman and try to send another request. And now if we go to our terminal, we can see that the latest event contains a payload in the data field and it is exactly the same as what we put in inside the broadcast with function. Isn't that neat? So that's a basic intro on broadcasting in Laravel and how to broadcast an event. 
We'll discuss further in the next lesson about the front end, private channel, and presence channel. I'll see you there. Key takeaways for this lesson. If a WebSocket client wants to subscribe to a WebSocket channel in Laravel, the client will first need to perform a HTTP handshake, in other words, to authenticate the user before establishing a persistent WebSocket connection. Event classes will need to implement the should broadcast interface before Laravel can broadcast them to the WebSocket. We'll need to configure the host and port of the pusher driver in broadcasting.php config file to get Laravel to use our self hosted Laravel WebSocket server. Otherwise, Laravel will attempt to use pusher out of the box. By default, Laravel will use the event fully qualified class name as the event name. If we want to use our own custom event name, we need to define the broadcast as function inside the class. We can attach data inside the event payload by defining a broadcast with functions inside the event class. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support. <laughs>